Well, here we go again. Harry and Meghan are seen taking their entire entourage to Oprah's for the five-minute drive to her estate in Montecito. They literally could have walked over. It's said that they stayed for an hour. I don't see any sign of Lilibet or Archie. Riddle me this, Batman. Why is Yanina Gavankar in the front seat? Let's look at what people are speculating about this drive. Is that a second interview? Second Oprah interview chat? Yes. My cards confirm that there will be a second Oprah interview in the works uh, a few days before this came out. Will Oprah be kind again? Excellent question. Oprah is no dummy. And before reading on this question in my last video, I felt that there was no way that Oprah would do another interview because of the 17 mistruths. There's two ways this next interview can go. One, Oprah throws them a bunch of softball questions like the first interview and lets them say, literally make up anything they want. And she just agrees and acts surprised by these stunning and brave revelations. It's like a Joe Biden interview. Or Oprah's going to get tough with the Ronin Royals. She's going to confront them about the 17 mistruths and get them to answer for that. She's going to get clarification on several matters. And by doing so, Oprah clears her name from the first interview. I believe this is what's going to happen. Harry and Meghan's secret meeting with Oprah. Not so secret in my mind. Harry and Meghan run to Oprah for a royal audience. I don't get it. I'll have to watch the video. Fruitlessly, the Sussexes locked out of Oprah's for an hour and they cry all the way home as she refuses a second interview. I'm skeptical on this, this one. You don't visit Oprah without an appointment. This was clearly planned. And we have Yanina Gavankar riding shotgun. Finally, Meghan and Harry are caught going to cry to Oprah after Netflix fired. So pundits are even speculating that Harry and Meghan were fired from Netflix and they're appealing to Oprah from, for help. This is actually very plausible. Harry and Meghan haven't produced anything. It is truly incredible. Uh, their complete lack of productivity for anything. Netflix and, and Spotify have even hired people to do like all the work for them and still nothing. Ling Ling. I'm amazed. Why do I think Harry and Meghan are going to visit Oprah? My, con my cards confirmed a second Oprah interview in my last video. But there's also an Oprah book club. Oprah is the queen of all book clubs and Harry has a memoir coming out any moment. Pretty much every book Oprah pumps on her book club list becomes an overnight New York Times bestseller. I believe that a primary purpose of this interview is that Harry is going to promote his new memoir during the second interview. Let's take a quick look at the body language here, because the body language doesn't lie. Number one, Harry is driving, and Meghan is in the back seat, and Yanina Gavankar is in the front seat. In the first Oprah interview, it focused on Meghan with Harry as an afterthought. But this second Oprah interview, I believe, will focus on Harry. He's in the front seat with Meghan taking the back seat. Do I think that Meghan and Harry consciously arranged themselves in the car like this for the drive to Oprah's compound? No. But the truth is always in the body language and the actions, and that's why it's so important. Yanina Gavankar is riding shotgun right next to Harry. She is going to play a key supporting role to Harry with Oprah while Meghan takes the back seat. Honestly, I don't know what she's doing there. I'm not even sure I know how to ask the cards in a way that I'm going to get a sensible answer to this question. And so I would love your comments on this. What key role do you think Yaniva, Yanina Gavankar is going to play in this second Oprah interview? interview? Let's get into it. Let's see what the cards want to reveal to us today. Good day, YouTubers. Welcome back to my channel. Time for a spot of royalty. I'm Joseph Magi, author of Playing Card Divination, Fortune Telling, The Magi Method. As always, you can find the book worldwide on Amazon and Kindle and paperback versions. Find the full color card deck used here uh, on Etsy slash Magi Method. Many thanks to the generous folks who buy me a cup of tea. So my first question, and the most obvious one, is... Is this going to be a tough interview uh, or, or another easy softball interview? Oh, that's so stunning and brave. They 
someone unnamed made allegations about Archie's skin color and oh you're so stunning and brave you don't want to tell us who it is oh wow what you know I mean is it gonna be like that or is she gonna get tough because Megan and Harry are not the first people who ever you know weren't completely honest with Oprah and when people do that with Oprah, she has a reputation to protect, and, and she's smart, and she's tough, and I wouldn't want to tangle with Oprah, so I tend to think she's going to be tough, so let's look at Oprah, Megan, and Harry. Is she going to take a tough stance, or it's going to be just another softball interview? Oh, I didn't check anything. My name's Oprah. I'm too busy doing my hair and, you know, pumping the, the weight loss programs. You know, I just, I can't be bothered. I just have this enormous staff of people to do all this stuff for me. But I forgot to ask. Okay, so Oprah and Harry and Meghan, is she going to take a tough stance? Oprah? <laughs> Those are interesting cards. Harry and Meghan. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. All right, is Oprah going to be tough or tender like a, a young chicken? Okay, well, here's Oprah. Cup overflowing. Very emotional. I mean, she tells an emotional narrative. Okay. Uh, family, permanent blockage. Okay, there are problems. And she's upset about it. Let's see. 12, 22, six diamonds in front of all the people. Uh, I think this looks pretty tough to me. I mean, she's still going to be the good guy. She's a little upset about what happened. But she has, uh, you know, she's Oprah. She has a reputation to protect. I think it's more telling over here with Meghan and Harry. Earthquake. Uh, worst case scenario. They need to be very clever about how they answer and crossroads can also be speaking with a forked tongue so it's th those 17 lies or 17 mistruths really uh are getting them in some hot water and they're gonna have to you know in order not to look like just buffoons they're really gonna have to be very clever about how they answer okay because a lot of people don't like admitting they're wrong and will never admit they're wrong and I believe that Megan is one of those people who will never ever admit she's wrong and since Harry is her husband uh, she's not going to go around letting Harry admit that he's wrong where Harry might just say oh yeah I'm sorry you know maybe that wasn't completely accurate blah 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 so they're really going to be put on the spot Harry and Megan are really going to be put on the spot, worst case scenario, about their prevarications. And they better be really clever about how they answer it, or this could maybe, like, sink their boat. I mean, they're, they're already scoring the lowest uh, popularity ratings ever, and their popularity just keeps going down. Why? They're not producing anything. They don't do anything. They just show up. Megan shows up in Evalde. Harry sends somebody. He's going to go to Ukraine. Why? You're no, you're not. You don't belong there, Harry. You know, you don't belong there, Megan. What, do, do something real. Produce something original. Be, you know, produce quality content. You know, don't just react to what other people are doing and hitch your star to that. So, yeah, she's a little upset about it. Okay, but Oprah's going to take the high ground. So this is 24, six spades. She's going to pull, uh, what's that talk show host? Ellen, she's going to pull an Ellen on them. She's going to act really nice, but she's going to be, she's going to be the iron fist in the velvet glove. Okay, and when that glove hits you, oh my goodness, there's an iron fist in there. So... Oprah's going to be nice about it, but she's going to be absolutely ruthless in exposing what she wants to expose to protect herself. She has, she has something to protect. Also, interestingly, in Le Normand, Le Normand, the cross can separate. Okay, and here in this spread, interestingly, this almost looks like a separation 
between Oprah and Harry and Meghan. She's she's saying, you know, I'm not just going to accept whatever you say. There's the cross is separating, you know, dividing between them. And they're going to feel a little put on the spot. So I think she's going to be really tough. What is Yanina Gavankar's role here? She is riding side seat. She's riding shotgun. Megan is in the back. What is she doing there? And I kept searching. I, okay, there is some connection between Megan and Yanina Gavankar, and I literally couldn't find it. Uh, I was searching and searching and searching, and all the... They just wanted to show me the current news where she's riding in the front going to Oprah's. So what, let's see if the cards want to tell me anything that I can interpret properly. What is Yanina Gavankar's role here sitting, you know, on the way, on the way to Oprah's? What is her role? Mm, no. Crossroads. Angel. Oh, wow. How interesting. There's a mother card. That's a baby card. Oh, wow. Uh, what is Yanina Gavankar's role? No baby. Uh, and decisions about no baby. 25, seven hearts. Okay, she may be there. And, and I don't know if I read you that uh, headline in the YouTubes that I was searching when I searched for going to, uh, you know, Megan and Harry going to Oprah's house. One of the headlines was that Yanina Gavankar is there to explain about Lilibet. Okay, that is literally what this can say. There's no Lilibet, and they need to talk about it. You know, they're going to they're gonna tell you a story about Lilibet and about the surrogacy, and that's what Yanina Gavankar is here for. So what do we have underneath? Uh, decision that has to be, something is happening right now, and they need to deal with it right now, about her her being a mother, about the birth, about Lilibet, uh, player and three black birds. And I, again, you know, we just did a video on this. I think something is about to be exposed. The doctor just fled. The doctor closed her practice and fled the scene. Uh, so it's about the, it's about the pregnancy. It's about Lilibet. It's about that doctor leaving the scene. Uh, player, she's there to make a play, to talk, to take action and make a single action about the motherhood and it needs to be done now she's there because a little bit something something really hot and i didn't even think of this before i threw these cards uh and, you know we have the video up i mean i already posted the video on the doctor leaving but i didn't think that oprah would get involved but oprah's a smart lady i mean don't underestimate someone like oprah she's a real smart lady and i would definitely estimate her uh, to, to be way ahead of Harry and Meghan in, in all of these media type, uh, things going on. And plus she's much older and age does, uh, I mean, if you're not a knucklehead, age does bring wisdom. And I would say a lot of my viewers would probably agree with me because we're older, tend to be older people. Age brings wisdom. Uh, so I think she's there all, it's all about little bit. It's all about that, that doctor fleeing the, the scene and closing her practice. This, uh, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make up a new question on the spot. Is, uh, is Oprah going to ask hard questions about little bit? Okay. And her birth is Oprah going to ask these hard questions because wow, what a softball interview she gave the first time. And this one, you know, we're going to get Oprah's, the claws are coming out. You know, Oprah's a tough lady. I wouldn't want to mess with her. So is Oprah going to ask tough questions about Lilibet? Ooh, problem. Water and the wine can be a birth card in front of the world. Oh, there's the devil. The devil had to show up. All right, let's read this. Okay, well, I mean, the devil is drawing my eye. So hard work overseas. Hamster wheel is a trip overseas or just really working really hard at something. Devil and straight razor. 
six spades. Look at how dark this is. It's so dark. The underlying is so dark. It's all dark cards and three out of five are spades. This is what's underlying this is quite dark with a lot of deception and lying and a lot of selfishness, a lot of lying and deception and will do anything to jacks. Oh my. Jacks are children. We have two alleged children. We have Archie and we have Lily. Hmm. Oh my. What do we have here? Hmm. Let's add it up. 22, 32 plus 7, 39. What in the heck could that be? 40 is 10 spades, 10 clubs, 10 clubs working real hard or they source the child overseas. Okay, really a difficult. All right, let's just read the top. What's on the surface? Eight hearts is birth. That's a great birth. Problems with the birth in front of the whole world. 16, 21, six hearts. Problem, and six hearts is family, karmic relationship. Problems, there are, there are self-evident now, there are problems with this birth and the whole world is about to see it. Okay, there are problems with Lilibet's birth. The doctor's quitting. She's fleeing the scene. Okay, now, that's, that's right on the surface. It has been brought to the surface. And we know from the cards, the, the palace, they really have something. And they're just, they're just waiting to, to release it, probably after Harry's memoir. They're going to give you one egg, you know, atomic bomb after another. You afraid Russia's going to drop some nukes? Just wait. The royal family's got some really heavy stuff to drop. Okay, what do we have here? Selfishness lies about the children over a long time and I, I think devil and straight razor. Straight razor is a single incident, a cut, a stab, a hurt, a single thing happening. These lies, uh, and the devil and the children over a very, they've been lying to us all along about everything and this stuff is about to be exposed and it's really, really, really bad. I wish I knew just like this much more and I could tell you more specifically what this is telling me underneath. So it's about to be exposed to the whole world. These problems, these things with Lilibet's birth, it's all lies and they've been just it's been going on and on and on and on, and there's a whole lot there. You can dig and dig and dig, and you get really tired, and you have to take a break and eat a sandwich, and then you have to dig and dig and dig some more. There's a lot there, and it's, it's about to pop out. Okay, it's about to pop off. So the question I asked is, is Oprah going to ask tough questions about Lilibet? Yes, that's what Nina Gav Yanina Gavankar is there for. That's what she's doing there. How interesting. I did not even anticipate that. Is a primary reason for this interview to promote Harry's, inter in Harry, bleh, Harry's memoir. Oprah is the book club, club queen. And that is a perfect context in order to interview them. Okay. Is this a primary reason to promote Harry's Memoir, Magi, Money, that's like a yes card, Ruler, Jack, hmm, is this a primary reason? Manifesting more money in a single event, 9 and 23, 9 and 13, 23, 23, family. Yeah, this is going to bring in a whole bunch of money. Okay, Harry got a $20 million advance. So the book, that's, that's just his cut. He gets, I don't know, 3%, 4%, whatever, 5%. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, my book is on Amazon. I know what I get. I don't know what you get from the big publishers. But the difference is, from the big publisher, they publish millions of copies. I am lucky to get to publish thousands of copies so I get a bigger cut of a much smaller pie. They get a smaller cut of a much larger pie and it still adds up to a whole lot more. And that's how grocery stores work and whatnot. 
Okay, so yeah, they they want some money out of this. They want to really kick it up. Yeah, so right on the surface, yes, they're going to talk about Harry's book. What's underneath? Reacting, big change, and change of direction. Big change, change of direction. Ruler and, ah, the ruler's making a play. Mm. The palace is making a play, and they're going to have to react to it. And, ooh. So underneath, the palace is about to make a play. So I'm asking about the book. So Harry is, is trying to get the book out before the palace can make a play against Harry. So the palace is putting their ducks in a row uh, to really uh, 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 get Harry and Meghan and to really knock them down and discredit them because that's, that's the game today. Uh, and he's really trying to, to make... To, to minimize what the palace is about to do. The king is about to make a play reacting to them. So the palace is reacting to Harry and Meghan. Harry and Meghan, Harry is reacting by trying to get this book out and make a big change to what's, what's about to change. The crossroads, you change path. You were going this way and now you're going this way. Well, that's what's about to happen. Uh, 24, 34. 32 is eight spades, nine hearts, nine diamonds, nine diamonds. Yeah, communication. So it's now becoming like a war of, of the press, of who can get out the dirt before the other guy gets out the dirt. So Harry needs to get the dirt out before the, the royals can put the dirt out on them. And this Lily thing, the surrogate children, I think that's really about to blow up in their face. And it's even going to come out. It's even going to be a huge revelation in the Oprah interview. I'm just going to ask, did Netflix hot fire Harry and Meghan? I mean, I did read on this before. They were coddling them. They're hiding. They're hiring people to work for them and to do all the production. And still nothing is coming out. I mean, I can't comprehend how it's possible that no content is still coming out. They still haven't put out any content for Spotify. You sit down with people and you talk to them. Harry and Meghan need to show up. Be here at 2 o'clock. OK, and we're going to interview these people. Here's a here's a list of questions you're going to ask them. Please read it before you show up at two o'clock. Please be ready. You know, hair and makeup and and clothing, wear clothing. OK, yeah, yeah, like that. And show up and ask the questions. Uh, that's it. That's all Harry and Meghan need to do. And they still are not producing content. So I I don't think they're going to fire them. Let's just ask. I was surprised by the Oprah interview. In the previous uh, one, when my card said, oh, yeah, there's another Oprah interview. Okay, so did Netflix fire Harry and Meghan? Yet. Oh, already. Yeah, already. Ah. No, there's the devil just hiding just behind uh, no, but they, they definitely will fire them. Eight spades. Okay, what do we have right on the surface? We're working with them. We have a solid foundation. They're communicating. Netflix is communicating to Harry and Meghan. Uh, you're, you're, you're my boy, Harry. You're my girl, Meghan. We love you, and we're going to do everything we can to, to see that you're successful. That's what they're saying on the surface. Underneath, uh, they're still part of the family, and they're coddling them like children. We love you. We love you, Harry and Meghan. But if you don't start producing something, we're going to fire you, dude. And do that. We're going to fire you. Okay? And all those fancy sweet words in the world, don't change that. If you don't start putting out, we're going to fire you. Uh, but all of these are very nice cards. It's just kind of in the back of their mind. Like, you know, we're going to have to fire these knuckleheads if they don't, like, finally do something. Okay, but they're, they're doing everything they can to, to make them successful. I mean, for goodness sake, I honestly, me personally, a, a single solo YouTuber and author, I, I know how hard this is. And I don't see what else they can possibly do for Harry and Meghan. I mean, for goodness sake, put some content out, dude. Let's add this up. 6, 8, 16, 26, 20, 20, 26, 27, 27 cross. Still, they're really, they're in it for the long term. We have two twos, commitment, family. We're going to treat you like, 
you know, they're being really nice to them, but ultimately we're going to have to fire it if you don't put it out. And right on the surface, they're telling them, communicating to Harry and Meghan, we're doing everything we can to, to make you successful. So Harry and Meghan are not that special. I mean, they are, they are really being coddled. I can't imagine someone like me or you or anybody you know would be coddled like that. Uh, but, I mean, just the rules, the laws of business, if you're not going to make any money for us, ultimately, and you're not going to produce any valuable content for Netflix or Spotify, you're going to, we're going to have to cut you loose, bro. I mean, there's just no other way. And there's, you know, there's just no other way. So we have some interesting things here. Oprah's going to take a tough stance. Uh, she's going to be really tough on them. And it's a really bad situation for Harry and Meghan. They better really plan what they're going to say and how they're going to say it. Or, or it's going to be even worse for them, you know, when they're confronted. Because this is the confronto. This is the confrontation. Okay, and people love drama. People love confrontation. Uh, they love it. It makes great television, but it could be really disastrous for Harry and Meghan. Why is Yanina Gavin Carr there? She's there because of Lilibet. It's associated with Lilibet. And Oprah, I think Oprah is going to dig in a little bit on what's going on with Lilibet. And something is really about to come out about Lilibet and probably Archie too. I, I, they are going to promote Harry's memoir. I don't see Netflix. Netflix is not firing them yet, but... Obviously, that's a distinct possibility. I'm Joseph Magi, uh, author of Playing Card Divination, Fortune Telling, The Magi Method. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment.